Hey, what up, people? I'm doing this video on the uh, Norma palette. I'm getting this out the Western experience. Just a uh, uh, basic, looks like a basic history book. I had it for a little while. Got it from uh, St. Vincent de Paul. I think it was only like some cents. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to talk about that and how it connects to North South America. Um, watch a couple of my other videos and um, look at some hieroglyphs. Uh, but let's let's talk about it. Let's get it. This was called the Norma Palette. Um. Zoom in a little bit. We're gonna talk about some of these things. It's the front, just the back. Let's see what the book. Let's see what the Western experience says about this. What's called the Norma palette. Top, the ceremonial palette of King Norma is a symbolic res representation of the unification unification of upper and lower egypt keep in mind upper and lower egypt is north and south america this side of the palace shows the king wearing the white crown of upper egypt smashing the head of an enemy the god Horus, in the form of a falcon holds a rope attached to a captive of Lower Egypt, a region symbolized by six papyrus plants. Now, that all this is very interesting. Uh, it's already confusing already because it's called the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. But still, the god Horus holds a rope a rope attached to a captive of Lower Egypt. So, how is the captives unified with Upper Upper Egypt? See how that's already confusing. But let's look at that uh, first. Let's go back a little bit. Uh, palace shows the king wearing a white crown of Upper Egypt. Let's look at this. the crown remember this the crown uh let me see what else did it say smashing the head of an enemy the god horse in the form of a falcon God horse in the form of a falcon holds a rope to holds a rope to a captive of Lower Egypt, a region symbolized by six papyrus plants. This right here. Now this was interesting because uh, watching um, teach me to be priestly. Uh, check his video out. Go and watch his video talking about the uh in ezekiel 17 the parable of the two the two eagles so this was this was like i mean his video was mind-blowing i mean <laughs> go watch that right after this watch that <laughs> if you haven't already um okay he's holding the head of the uh Look at the king smashing the head. Where have we seen this before? But we'll talk about this. I'm going to talk about all this right here. Uh, we're going to look at some of this other stuff too. But I suggest you Google it. You can pause it and Google it also. It's called the Narmer Palette. And we're going, we're going to talk about that. This is the name of Narmer. 
right here, Kingfish, King Catfish. That's what the that that's what I'm not lying. King Catfish. Pause it. Use your Google. King Catfish. Right there. Boom. Okay. The parable of the, of the two eagles, man. But let's go down here and look at the bottom or the back. Uh, bottom. On this side of the palette, King Norma has completed his conquest of Lower Egypt and wears the red crown that of that kingdom. He is renewing the bodies of the de of decap decapitated victims. The exotic beasts with the necks intertwined may symbolize the unity of two Egypts. Of the two Egypts. <clears throat> I did a video talking about the two Egypts. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then this doesn't say the, the unity of North 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 and Upper and Lower Egypt. Excuse me. North and South America. <laughs> I was right the first time. It says unity of the of the two Egypts, not not uh upper and lower Egypt. Completed his conquest of lower Egypt. See how that sounds? That doesn't even sound right. Well, let's look at the palette. <clears throat> okay. Here he goes wearing the crown, of upper and lower Egypt. Okay. Here goes the signature, Kingfish. And this right here, uh, when you Google it, uh, it <clears throat> it breaks it down a little bit more. Uh. I guess uh, one of these guys are holding uh, uh, him right here. He's holding uh, uh, is what you call a uh, hold on. Let me get that for you right quick. It's called a Normer Mace Head. A Normer Mace Head. Normer Mace Head. He's holding some type of uh, Normer Mace Head. Google that. So right after this, this video. Google the Normer Mace Head, and we're gonna kind of talk about that in a second, cause there's a uh, there's another Mace Head, and it's called the Scorpion uh, Mace Head. There's a Scorpion Mace Head and a Normer Mace Head. Um, I'm kind of gonna talk about the the Normer Mace Head, cause it's dealing with this uh, Vulture. We're gonna talk about that. Um, making deals with the Devil King Normer. Um, the captivated victims. Do they look like they want to be unified with them? They don't look too happy. <clears throat> Here goes the king catfish symbol, the catfish symbol again. Jesus fish or an armor fish. Things that make you say, hmm. Here goes the Ka. We talked about this. And we talked about this in my other video. Ka. Okay, the intertwining uh unification of the two Egypts. <clears throat> they don't look too unified. They don't look too happy. Okay, let's let, let's move on a little bit. <clears throat> the Old and Middle Kingdoms, unification of Egypt and its kings. Historians treat. Remember, this is in 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 uh in their in their minds. Okay, uh, histor this their uh what's the word for theory. Historians treat Egyptian history in three periods: the Old, Middle, and New. Old, mid, old and New, Old and New, Old Testament, New Testament <laughs> type thing. These periods, in turn, are divided into some thirty groups of kings or dynasties. 
Early Egypt was divided into two regions, Upper Egypt, Nile Valley, and Lower Egypt, River Delta. Uh, King Drop, uh, it's a guy named King Drop. Uh, check his videos out. He talks about the Nile and, and how that's uh, connected to the Mississippi and Lower Egypt. We we going to uh, Lex Wilden, uh smash a video on... Uh, um the Rio Negro it's in South America uh okay where the water spreads into a shape like uh the Greek letter delta a king Nemus Minus also known as Norma who lived about 31 BC unified upper and lower Egypt and established a capital at Memphis. Remember that capital at Memphis. We didn't. I didn't talked about this in the previous video. Memphis is the capital of Lower Egypt. Uh, which is T. Noctilin, but we'll kind of get back into that. By the beginning of the Old Kingdom, about 2700 B.C., the land had been consolidated under the strong central power of the king who enjoyed a supremacy that we can hardly imagine today. Mm. The king was not called Pharaoh until the new kingdom. We're going to talk about that also. Which began about 15, 1570 BC. Was the owner of all mm. Was the owner of all Egypt and was considered a god as well. The whole economy was a royal monopoly. Talked about that dumb diversity. This monopoly, royal monopoly, serving the king was a hierarchy of officials ranging from governors, provinces, down through local. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm holding this camera. Uh, camera uh, holding down to local mayors and tax collectors artisans peasants and servants all working for the king nor the whole system the supreme monuments of the old kingdom and the three immersed period pyramids tombs for kings built at Giza now within the city of Cairo between okay we're, we're gonna go religion the king the king was seen as God, specifically the incarnation of the God Horus, who was representation in, in art as a falcon. Okay. Boom. Now let's go back. And we're still going to deal with this. We're still dealing with this palette. We're not getting too off track. We're still dealing with this palette. We talked about uh, Narmer, his name. Menes, also known as Norma. Menes, also known as Norma. So we're gonna we're gonna get into this for right quick. Uh, got my other book out. Okay. The cow. You see the cow. Right there. Uh we talked about Memphis. I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, where was we at? Establish a capital at Memphis. Okay, we're gonna go back into my other book. Memphis would be Lower Egypt, South America. Also known as T. Noctilin. And if you look at old uh, pictures of T. Noctilin, it looks like a looks like an eye. Looks like the eye of Horus, which is also Mexico City. And Negroes have a lot of history down there. They have murals um, um, to you to you in Mexico City. Uh, Used to be a pyramid on the lake. Um, 
that pyramid um i think connects has has something to do with a tree it may have been a tree at one point uh you know that so that's something else to kind of get into watch me teach me to be priestly's video on 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 the trees the trees and the uh the parable in ezekiel 17 uh i'm not i don't want to get off too off track okay uh now how does that relate to uh quizzicoto <clears throat> Now, I had to print this up side by side so you could see exactly what I what I'm saying. It's the same it's the same act going on. Holding the head. Same feather serpent joining the two nations. Here it is on, on the palette in Egypt. Remember, North and South America was flooded, so uh, history had to be rewritten. So everything everything in Egypt it ain't, uh, everything in Kemet ain't exclusive to Kemet. It, it's, it's a world history, especially in this type of act. Especially in this type of act. You know, if you know, uh, I want you to research King Norman, uh, Menaces, because uh, I got this. This is called, this is a codex called Telleriano Reminences. Reminences. Okay. Take off Re. Ray. Ray means king. Ray, King, King, King Menesis, Codex, King, look this up, <laughs> and this is what you're going to get, tell me this is not talking about the same act, North and South America is Upper and Lower Egypt, look at the crown, I could use this, Hold on, let me bring this over here a little bit so so we can read. The God Horse. Oh, hold on, no, no, let's go, let's go back up. Uh, King Norma is a symbolic representation of the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. This side of the palace shows the king wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt. King Narmer has completed his conquest of Lower Egypt and wears the red crown of that kingdom. Let's go back up here and look at Quetzalcoatl, the feather serpent. Look at his crown. Ain't it kind of, he got the little pointy, pointy crown in his red and white. Feather serpent. The serpent made a deal deal with the with the um, Assyrian. Uh, some of these guys on, on that I watch, you go down to uh, other uh, my like videos and stuff, and check some of those out, man. These guys bringing all this information, it's it's like mind blowing. Like, so I'm just bringing this out. Quetzalcoatl is also uh, King Armor. Which is also, you know, uh, Nemesis, Nemesis, Kingfish. He made a deal with the devil. Okay, Google the uh, the um, the Narmer Mace Head. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to my Egyptian book. Pull this out right quick. Two lady goddesses of Upper and Lower Egypt. 
the feather serpent. Look at the Norman Mace head. He made a deal with the. They made a deal together. The Norman Mace head. He he he's with this vulture. This vulture called Nipiket. Nipiket. Some some like that. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is also Quizicotel. Nebuchadnezzar, the same act. It's the same act going uh all these things are a uh it's a title. It's also a title. It was a world it was a world historical uh event. So, I hope you enjoyed that. You go back, pause, rewind. You can read for yourself. I'm not a good reader. I'm a better writer, better thinker. Uh, um, I don't really have the materials to really show you everything I want to show you. But stay tuned. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get that handle for you so we can bring out some more stuff. Um, still working on going to the wilderness. So, uh, you know. Praise the Most High. Peace out.